Even when you launch a counter ambush against multiple attackers, you're fighting an uphill battle. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of new bold targets. New bold targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's lesson comes to us out of South London in England, and it shows a pub owner who's just not having it when his pub gets broken into. Very top window at the door there, you can see these guys futzing around at the windows at the very top of the screen. Just barely see them there, and they're actually going to bust in the window at the top. I've sped it all up here for the sake of time, slowed it down just a little bit, but still speeding up. And they start bashing into stuff and split up to get in here and start getting valuables. But look to the right hand side, you're going to see the owner show up, and dude has a bat in his hand. He's just not having it. It's going to just take a good whack at that guy and now start getting after him with the bat. Now, the guy's not exactly excited about it, of course, so he's going to try to hold him off, but the owner's just not having it, going to give him a few good more whacks. The other guy's going to show up as well, and owner's going to go after him. Now, you're going to see both these guys go after the owner for just a minute. Notice that the owner is barefoot here and whatever's all over the floor and all the glass broken and all that stuff's going to get him. Now notice that our bad guys are both at the window, one inside the door, one outside the door. Going to see our, uh, our landlord here is not really having it with these guys, trying to hold the one in and hit him with the bat, hit both of these guys with the bat. Now he's going to finally kind of get a, a, you know an earful of both of them and have enough of it and back off from them and tell them to get the heck out of his pub. Now they are going to oblige him that and climb out the window and pile off and you can see that our owner here has taken quite a toll as well he's drained physically you could see on his face that he's hurt a little bit as well and thankfully nothing worse happened that's where this one ends well he definitely put the old hickory shampoo to those guys if you want to support the channel one of the ways that you can do that is hitting the link in the description to our merch shop you can buy all kinds of cool stuff there and in the process support what we do at active self-protection out of today's video, I want to think about launching a counter ambush. I want to think about using both environmental and purpose-built tools and the difficulty of facing multiple attackers. So let's start by saying that we have to have a plan for our business as well as for our home. In this case, it looks like both are the same thing, sleeps above the store. You need to have a plan for an invasion of your home or your business after hours. And this guy did have a plan for that. And as you see the guys break in, they're trying to grab stuff. You don't have to let them do that, though we can talk about deadly force laws in another time. We do that on extra all the time. Now, when our landlord comes in and you can see he is launching a counter ambush here. This guy is occupied. His attention is not on our defender. And he has every right to defend his home. And again, though, in London, I don't know how much trouble he is going to get attacking this guy with a bat. Most places in the U.S., in your home or place of business especially, you have some significant leeway. However, you want that first hit to be a debilitating hit. You want it to absolutely do the job of getting this guy out of the fight. And the owner doesn't do that. You notice here he's going to hit that guy upside the back of the neck, really, and just kind of get after him and start punishing him. Now, I would prefer you have taken him out with the very first one. Now, what I'm going to notice here is how important empty-handed skills are because notice that the bat at this distance is not super useful. It was very useful when he could control the distance and get into the right range for the bat, but once that bad guy has closed the distance and is grappling with him, he's gonna need some significant empty-handed skills. In this case, some standing grappling skills, and so I always recommend to people in your empty-handed skill regimen, you definitely should have some standing grappling as part of your repertoire. Now, thankfully, our owner does, and he's able to get the guy off him, use his head to get the guy off him, and go back after him. Now, again, knowing what the range is of the tool that you're using, very important, because you notice he pushed him off, and then is able to get that bat back in the fight. Once again, if you're gonna stage a tool, whether it's a bat, a firearm, a knife, a pepper spray, whatever the case may be, you must know the range of that tool. And not just through watching YouTube videos, but you need to train with it. You need to actually get out there on the mats or get to the range or understand with some significant training. You have to have some knowledge of what the right range is so that you can use it most effectively. Did very effectively there. Now let's talk about multiple attackers here. Notice that our good guy had to completely take his eyes and his attention off of the bad guy that he was just wailing on in order to deal with the second bad guy. We say this all the time. Every time you add an attacker, it increases the difficulty not twice as much, but an order of magnitude, maybe 10 times as much. 
because you have so much to deal with and such a high cognitive load. So recognize that if you're going to learn to face multiple attackers, that takes a significantly enhanced skill set because his attention is diverted from one to the other. Now, notice our bad guys are using environmental weapons as well, and our good guy here is going to grab that chair up and fling it and use it as an environmental weapon in the moment. Now, of course, purpose-built defensive tools are the most effective defensive tools. I would argue here that using the bat, which is, you know, again, a man-made tool, is more effective than using the chair. However, the chair was available and deliverable in the moment, and so therefore he used what was in his environment, not just what was in his hands. That's very wise. As a self-defender, you gotta know that sometimes it's a tool that's in the environment or something that was man-made that you can turn into a defensive tool in the moment. That's your best bet, though of course purpose-built tools are always the best. Now then, as he goes and starts chasing these guys, they are trying to hightail it. I can't tell you enough, I'd recommend you let him. Because this is where the owner took a pretty significant beating here. He's trying to, you know, meet out a little bit of punishment, give these guys what for, and give them a little, a little bit of the old hickory shampoo for their efforts. But you gotta recognize that was a heavy cost on him as well. Eventually he gets tired of paying that cost and lets them leave. If the bad guys wanna flee, my suggestion is to let them flee. From a tactical perspective, that's your best bet because you're trying to protect yourself and again protect your business at home and that's perfectly acceptable. Now I do want to think about emotional as well as physical fitness here as well. Notice that our owner, he is battered in his face. He's obviously very physically tired. This has lasted only a couple of minutes but in a real fight for your life, boy that's just going to take every bit of oxygen out of your system that you have and therefore having good cardio and good strength and good physical fitness is important to our self-defense. Even more important is having the emotional fitness to stay in the fight, to be willing to go, to ignore the injuries and the pain and the suffering, to protect yourself and those and that which you love. All things considered, boy, I think this pub owner did a pretty decent job. Let's learn the lessons here so that we can better cover our ASP.